Before we continue with the video, if you like what I'm doing here on this channel, please consider subscribing. It helps the channel a lot. Anyway, let's get back to the video. This is essentially what we will be creating today. So I have this help bar, which is uh, <clears throat> changing color depending on how full it is in a gradient. Uh, so if we take damage, we can see that we get depleted hit points and also uh, the, the, the color changes along a gradient. And we can also go out here and I can increase the health bar with a key press and you can see that it changes along that as well. So we'll be setting up a very simple system how to create this in a very nice and fluid manner. Welcome back. In this tutorial we will be looking at how you can have a health bar display different colors depending on how full or how empty it is. And this approach will work for almost all kinds of health bars and other types of progress bars except for a few exceptions and we will be talking about one of them in this case as well. Um, if you want to follow along and use the exact same health bar system that I have, then I will highly recommend that you go and check that tutorial out in the link. I will leave into the description for that. So uh, let's just get started by looking at our health bar. So this is what we have set up currently. Um, it's a health bar that has a image and what we will be playing around with is the fill color and opacity. And having an image as a fill color, as well as having changes to the tint, will get results that are not very pretty because it will be mixing the two colors together. And we want to have some pure colors, which means that we want to have this progress bar white. So we will be removing our image for this progress bar. So instead it will be looking something like this now, which is much better. Okay, with that out of the way, let's start creating the system then. So what we want to create is essentially something that uh, you can have different colors in different like fields of the health bar. You could do it by going into your health bar and setting like checking at different ranges, saying if it's above a certain range or below a certain value or something like that, and then you set the color. But we want to have something that's a little bit more gradient, something that transitions more cleanly between different colors. So to do that, we will be creating a curve to assist us. We'll go to miscellaneous and the curve. We'll create a curve linear color and we can call this C underscore hub. Opening this up, this is what we're approached with. And the first thing we want to do here is we can see that this curve go, goes from zero to one. And over here, we want to change this value. So we can right click over here and say, choose color and go from uh, one, one, one to be zero, zero, zero. Now, what we have here down here is the actual colors, red, green, and blue. You can see that because when I mark it over here, these two points, you can see that all of these three are marked. And then when I click or mark these up here, you can see that it's the alpha or the opacity for the, the curve. So what we want to do here is essentially, we create a color here to begin with. So we right click up here, we choose color, and we can say we want something that's red. So let's put in red like so, by putting a, a one in the, the color. So now we have a pure red. And let's say we wanted to end with something that's green. So we right click here, choose color, and we choose full green. Now, something that's important to note, if you want to have a a gradient you can see that we already actually have a perfectly uh, good gradient from the red to the green over here and this might actually be enough for you but you might want to have some more control but something to keep in mind is that it will be easier to create a a good looking gradient if you're using just two colors uh, if we were to involve blue in this we would get some pretty freaky results because it's trying to interpolate between the different colors so having just green and red in this case will be better for us. So what we could do now is we can left click here at 0.5 for example. We can choose a color and we can say that maybe over here we wanted to have something that's a bit yellow. So we want to have something that's one in red and maybe 0.7 will give us a good yellow. Something like that. So now we see here that we have a yellow. Maybe we want to have more control over the orange. We can click somewhere over here. We can right click choose color and we can choose something that is maybe I don't know zero point what should we do zero point two maybe that looks fairly orange 
So now you see we have some orange here as well. So now we have essentially four different points here where we have defined a color and we get a gradient in between them. Now, the good part of having it like this is that it allows us to tweak this very easily. We don't have to change any values, hard-coded in code or anything like that. If we want to change how the gradient looks, we just have our markings up here now that we can change. So if we wanted the yellow to be further here so that the gradient goes from green to yellow sooner, we can have it over here. Maybe we wanted the orange to go a little bit more aggressive. Maybe we don't want to have red only when we're at zero. Maybe we want to see red a little bit sooner. Maybe when we're at 20% or something like that. So this is actually 10%. So let's say we have it over here. Maybe we wanted the green to not be just when we're full. Maybe we want to have it a little bit further down. Or maybe you want to have it only when you're exactly at full and then lighter greens between there. This is all up to you how you want to configure it. But essentially, this becomes our base for what our uh, help bar will look like. So if we save this now, we can start making use of this in our help bar. The first step to making use of this is of course to go to our help bar and figure out where we want to have it update. In this case we have a health bar that's very simple, it updates over here when this function is called, and this is when we want to fix this. So we can drag out our progress bar here, we can say we want to set our fill color and opacity, and now we just need to have a color. We could add our curve into this blueprint, or we could make it a little bit more universal and freely accessible for other blueprints. So let's do that by creating a blueprint function library. So we go here to blueprints, blueprint function library, bpfl underscore help. We open that up, and then we call this uh, get health color. And we want to have an input that is going to be a float, which will represent our actual health. It will be a percentage value between uh, 0 and 1. Then we have an output, which will be a linear color, which will be the actual color that we want to get from this uh, function to display. And we can call this um, health color, like so. So now we just need to get our curve. And we can do that by adding a local variable saying help curve. And we define this as a linear curve color. And it should be appearing here. Curve linear color. Object reference like so. And we can now add our curve here, our C health. Like that. So now we have that. And all we need to do now is essentially say we want to, from our health curve, get value. And you can see we have a get linear color value here. So we can hook up our health and put our color out. So this will essentially uh, use our health as an input and then it will read from the curve. So over here it will say, uh, what, what is your health between this value over here, which is zero and this value over here, which is one and see where are we percentage wise in health. And from that it will get the corresponding color for it. So that's all it does. So we can compile this and save, we can close this down. I actually renamed it improperly. Let's rename it quickly. So BPF L, like so. And we can save this and we go into our health bar. Now we can say that we want to make use of this. So we can say get health color. However, now we get it as a, a function call and we may not want to do that. We may want to have this as a pure function and this is perfectly fine since we are just reading from this. So we can choose this function and say we want to have it as pure, which makes it easier to have it here because now it's green and we can just hook it up. We don't need to have an execution pin. And the input we want to send in here is of course going to be our health percentage. Compiling and saving, we should now be done to demonstrate this. Now, if you follow the tutorial of when we created this specific health bar, you will know that we have a pain causing volume here, which allows us to actually go in and take damage so we can see what the effects of uh, taking damage on the health bar is. And you can see that it starts off as sort of a yellowish color when we're in here and going into the pain causing volume, you can see that our health is depleting and also changing along the gradient that we have defined. So it's looking pretty great. Uh, one of the things though, what if you're following this specific example is that uh, you may want to keep track of, uh, let's see here, health bar and the designer. If we were to put this to a very high value, 
like so, 100, you can see that we get some feathering here. And this is because we still have some of the other settings here. So you want to remove the drawing as image for these, like so, and you'll see that we have a perfectly uh, good health bar. And that way it will look better in this specific case. But your specific case might vary a little bit, but at least now you know how to do this uh, kind of gradient and color change. Anyway, I hope that this was useful for you. Keep on learning. Take care. Hopefully you found this video helpful. If you liked the video, leave a like. If you did not like it, leave a dislike. Leave any suggestions or comments you have down below. Subscribe and share this video if you want to see more like it in the future. That is all for now. Keep on learning. Take care.